Hello, I'm Angie Mako, and I am an energy healer, and I specialize in helping women to heal from grief, whether that's the loss of a child or a spouse from death, divorce, parental alienation, separation of some sort. And today I want to talk about, are you brokenhearted? Um, you know, what, what leaves you longing because you have this love, but no one to give it to you? What way of life are you being asked to say goodbye to? Grief has been defined as love with no place to go. And when our heart gets hurt, our natural inclination is to shut down and to prevent further damage. It's like the body saying, that sucked, we're not gonna do that again. But shutting down is not the answer to being brokenhearted. Four years ago, when I lost my daughter Maddie, I was in a state of shock and overwhelm, and I just wanted to protect my heart. Um, but what if there's a more conscious way to grieve that honors both you and your loved one more? I realized now, but I didn't know then, that I was actually in a state of trauma and um, here's how. I was taking fearful actions and here's a list. Number one, I was becoming more hyper vigilant with trying to um, make sure my mom and husband took care of themselves. Two, I was insensitive with some of my words to my stepdaughter Chelsea, who I compared my love and her you know, grief. Three, I formed some business collaborations that were made from a place of neediness. Four, I felt needy of my networking group who couldn't really support me. Five, and I took my anger and frustration out on my husband. And six, I compared my connection to my husband to Maddie. So, here are five reasons to keep our heart open after being brokenhearted. Number one, when our heart is open, we can consciously express and not suppress our pain. You know, there's a lot of ways to express our pain. We can do it through journaling or blogging or talking to someone that we trust or hugging someone or painting or pottery or building a tree house. Um, I love this quote from Princess Leah, take your broken heart and make it into art. Um, when we're conscious of our pain, we have easier, we're easier on ourselves and we understand ourselves better. And number two is feel the feelings. When our heart is open, we can actually feel the feelings and however you feel, it's okay. Um, I felt a lot of guilt after Maddie died um, because I wanted to be a better, more conscious mom and I felt like I had a lot of shoulds, like I should have known this or that or done this or that, um, but it was enough. Intense feelings are like waves. Think about it, if we put up a wall around us, if those waves come crashing into us, they just get bigger and bigger. But if we can breathe through those intense feelings, then they move through us. And that's the idea, is to just feel the feeling and let it alchemize into a more peaceful acceptance. In the uh, notes, you'll see a you are safe exercise. Try that out. Number three, when we are open-hearted, we will be aware of low self-worth and a vulnerability of feeling happy again. We may feel like we don't deserve to be happy again because look at the pain that I've caused. Um, why should I feel good? Um, a part of this feels like we deserve punishment and we're actually more comfortable in that trauma land than we are in praising ourselves. So um, there is no perfect parent. Um, if we continue to be laden with guilt and shame, we'll not move forward. Number four, let's not expect people to be someone they're not. This uh, woman named Susan Hannafin McNabb wrote a book called A to Z Healing Toolbox. And she talks about there being three types of people in our lives. Uh, the, the beers, the doers, and the put on the shelfers. So the, let's talk about the doers first. They, they wanna get things done. They're task masters. Um, they have a, usually a lot of energy. And I think of my mom, you know, but they're not the best with their feelings. You know, they're not very touchy feely. And then you have the beers. These people will sit with you in your pain. They will, pre they will be with you. They won't wanna run away from those feelings. They'll just be in your presence and be very comforting. I would say that I'm a little bit more like that um, because I can sit in the fire with you. And then the put on the shelters are just people that really don't support us and we're not canceling them. We're just saying, hey, when you're ready to be supportive, 
you'll come back to my life. Number five, let's not compare our grief. When we're keeping an open heart, we won't do this. Don't do what I did. I remember about a month after our, my daughter died, me and my stepdaughter were um, sitting out in a car about to go into this holiday open house and we were with her boyfriend and I made some sort of comment to her that um, like she and Maddie always said they were soulmates and I said well I seem like I was more of a soulmate to her than you were. I don't know what motivated me to say it but it created a rift in our relationship that I think to this day is still there and um, you know when we're grieving unconsciously that destroys relationships because we think others should grieve like we do or what have you. Um, we can really get in our own way with that. So when we feel brokenhearted, just to recap, you know, we don't, we don't know who we are anymore. We don't want to express our feelings. We don't want to feel them. And we feel unsafe to open our hearts and love again because we wonder if we deserve it. We'd love for people to rescue us from our pain and be the perfect listener and supporter. And we'd love to compare our grief to others. But none of those things really serve us. And, you know, what if there was a better way to more consciously grieve and be in touch with our feelings? Um, what if we looked at being heartbroken as a sign that we're capable of great love? And if you are heartbroken, know that you're not alone. Each of us will eventually experience feelings of emptiness, longing, loss, grief to an extent. Um, love, love comes from many sources and you deserve to feel loved again in your heart. Um, I invite you to read a poem by Tara Nash called Grief Burst. It's at the end in the notes here. Um, it's just a wonderful, supportive poem. And I also invite you to reach out to me at harmonyharbor.com, the contact page. Let me support you. I'm here to help you on your healing journey.